Hi, for this recording, I'm going to determine the limits of the following sequences. First is a n is equal to 5 power n plus 3 times n factorial plus 1 over 2 power n factorial plus n power 5 minus 2 power n. Second, b n is cosine square root of n pi times pi over 4. So let's look at the first limit first. So the first sequence is this one. Now of all the terms, 5 power n, n factorial, n power 5, 2 power n, eventually n factorial is the largest term. So first of all, you recognize that a dominant term is n factorial. Right? Compare n factorial with n power 5, 5 power n. In fact, for n large, we will expect n factorial is greater than 5 power n, greater than n power 5, greater than, all right, uh, greater than 2 power n, greater than n power 5. Anyway, we are going to divide every term by the dominant term. So a n is equal to 5 power n over n factorial. That's 3 factorial over 3 factorial is 1. 3, 3 times n factorial over n factorial is 1. 1 over n factorial. And 2 plus n power 5 over n factorial minus 2 power n over n factorial. And now we are going to let n go to infinity. Now in this case, we will have to recognize a few basic now sequence. So let's look at some of the basic now sequence. Okay, I'm going to use the PowerPoint slide here. Okay, so some of the basic now sequence. Which can find on page 48 of the dependent text. For example, I'm going to use C. And P, I'm particularly going to use a D c power n over n factorial and n power p over n factorial d and e. These are basic now sequence. So let's go back to the solution again. So in this case, first of all, I just take a note here. So this is a basic now sequence. First of all, this one is a basic now sequence of c power n over n factorial. Okay, let's take a look again. All right, basic now sequence. C power n over n factorial part d. All right. And then, so this is also the same for c equal to 1. And this is also the same 2 power n over n factorial. And then there's also another one is n power p over n factorial. P is equal to 5. You can see again from the basic now sequence, point number 5, n power p over n factorial of p greater than 0. So I just quote there as these are basic now sequence as 5 power n, n factorial, 1 over n factorial, n power 5 over n factorial. 2 power n over n factorial are basic now sequence. Therefore, by the combination rule, all right. So by the combination rule of sequence, we can obtain the limit of an now, which is limit of an. When n goes to infinity, is equal to 0 plus 3 plus 0 over 2 plus 0 minus 0, which is 3 over 2. So this will settle the limits for the first sequence. Now let's look at the limits of the second sequence now. So bn in this case is cosine of square root of n pi over 4. 
Now we know that the graph of cosines always oscillate between minus 1 and 1. We know cosine can look like this, between minus 1 and 1, and it never stops. So you suspect that there is no limit at all in the end. So one way to handle this situation is we're going to use a subsequence rule. So let's look at what is the statement of subsequence rule first. It says that to show that a sequence diverge, you put that sequence diverge either show that a n has a two subsequence, convergent subsequence with different limits. This is called the first subsequence rule. So let's look at the solution again. So we are going to do some backwards calculation. We know that cosine of square root m pi over 4 can be equal to 1 and cosine of square root m pi over 4 can be equal to minus 1 depend on n now right so for the first case this means that square root m pi over 4 if this is equal to 1 then square root m pi over 4 must be equal to 0 2 pi 4 pi 6 pi or that means that 2k pi okay so you just take note that cosine curve with this is 1 I like here so this is actually 0 2 pi and come to here this is 4 pi only so all the even multiple of pi okay go to 1 2 3 4 5 so that means that that means that square root m pi equal to 8k pi multiplied by 4 Cancel the pi, get square root n equal to 8k, and so n equal to 64k square. So based on this information, I know that that means that b 64k square, when n equal to 64k, this is equal to cosine 64k square pi over 4, and this is equal to cosine. 8k pi over 4 and this is equal to cosine 2k pi and now this is 1 as k equal to 1 2 3 4 5 so that means that this subsequence converge to 1 because it is equal to 1 all the time now let's look at another subsequence now so this time I want to find out when is cosine square root m pi 4 equal to minus 1 so looking backwards in this case now this is happening when square root m pi over 4 equal to 1 equal to all the odd multiple of pi that means 2k plus 1 pi how do I do that so let's look at the graph again when does the cosine equal to minus 1 so cosine equal to minus 1 when here okay this is when x equal to pi, this is when x equal to 3 pi, okay, then 5 pi, and so on. So, this is how I get odd multiple of pi pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, so that 2k plus 1 pi will be all representing odd multiple of pi, so that this is square root m pi over 4 is equal to times 4, 2k plus 1 pi, and then cancel the pi, so square root n equal to 4 times 2k plus 1 so n equal to 16 times 2k plus 1 square therefore b of 16 2k plus 1 square is equal to cosine of eventually 2k plus 1 pi and we know that this is equal to minus 1 therefore some the subsequence of this subsequence here converts to minus 1. Therefore, by the subsequence rule, so by the first subsequent rule, we know that the sequence BK, BN diverge. Right? So this is the end of the recording.